Hi. Hey. Get out of here. Sup? You go. Don't tell me what to do. I'm telling you, get out. Stop. I just realized if I leave yeah. my phone out there, I'm never going to find it again. Yeah, that's a thing. Oh, what's this wee bottle here? Oh, this is actually kind of uh, weirdly exciting. Ka Not sure. Very well disclosed. Kapahi? Yeah, so Kauai distilling. <laughs> Right, the whiskey's called Kapahi. Yeah. Kauai just get like, you know, the island of Kauai. Okay, so it's from Hawaii. Yeah. Hmm. But it's not, though. But it is. Now, there's no um, Hold on. lying Wait, or... Let me, let me catch up. It's not, but it is. You're about to understand what I mean by that, because <laughs> okay. it's really hard to say. Because if I need to understand, I have a seat. But to there's... really just absorb it? Yeah. Hmm? I sort of wouldn't need that right now. <laughs> I uh, There's no lying going on here. Yeah. Right? They're being... And by the way, this is from... Magnificent bastard, Subasa Scott Akeda. Subasa Scott Akeda, you magnificent bastard. Fight. He's also a benevolent bastard because he sent us an old poly. Hell yeah. Which we've done multiple nice. versions. Nice. Thank you. He's in his batch five, nice. so that's going to go into the vault. Getting the restock's a big deal. Yeah. But this is, so here's the story. These are a family who started a coffee bean farm. Of course. Right? As you Grew do. Coffee, as you do in, and then got was into. It, was it Kona? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then got into tobacco leaf. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then was like, what if we did grain for whiskey? Mm hmm And so they started partnering with farms around the island for corn. So this is 100% corn from the island of Kauai. Oh. Right? Yeah. But he doesn't have a distilling permit. Or a distillery, so they ship the grain to Spokane, Washington. Okay. Right. Yeah. To people we know, Dry Fly Distilling, who we've yeah, liked yeah. some of their yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do the distillation, and I think the aging and technically release it through Washington. Okay. So. Oh look, there's Dry Fly right there. Yeah. The so, grain. To remind you. Yeah, that's one of the ones that we've yeah, done before. Dry fly. So dry fly. They're the people behind this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the distillers. distillers. The distilling. So Dry Fly, I think, distills it and maybe ages it. Yeah. But I think they're sort of letting these guys call all the shots. Sure. Well, I mean, it's going to be more interesting with like a Hawaii background. The, right. The grain, the, the corn you said was grown in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. And so you end up with distilled and bottled by Kauai Distilling Company in Spokane, Spokane Washington. Yeah. Yeah. So which is it? Because right. the aging. Is yeah. not going to be Hawaiian aging. No, that's a big deal. Huge difference. But I'm curious to see what Hawaiian grown corn. Do we know what varietal of corn this was? Uh, yeah, specifically. Uh, please don't be yellow dent. Please don't be yellow dent. No, it's it's a Hawaiian rare varietal. I can't oh. remember the weird name of it. Lovely. But uh, done by one farm yeah. in one location, and then they've blended it with. Yellow did oh, at some level okay. because scale Cause, and because see yeah, yeah, I don't is, know, you know if what? this one was this blended. is a roller coaster ride of oh that's really cool oh, okay. okay oh but that's really cool it's like oh okay. I don't think this one was blended I okay. think this is one oh because they had like five variations and they were all yeah. named by code yeah 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 and depending on which code it was because it, here's the problem it's obvious if mm -hmm. you blended. Like your special Hawaiian yeah, yeah. corn with the yellow dent, but the proportion is, well, is it 95% yellow dent and 5% of the special varietal? Wow, this is, man, I'm projecting so hard. only six months old. I'm projecting so hard. I was getting a pineapple on the nose. That's yeah. Not, that's not a thing. No. These were five-gallon barrels for six months. But it is a different character of fruitiness. It is different. Yeah. And the grain corn dust is not as dominant. It's there, but it's a little less agricultural and a little more... I'm saying canned peaches. Yeah, it's very sweet, yeah. yeah it's canned. very interesting. I mean, it smells young, and it smells bright and fresh. Yeah, canned peaches. It's definitely young. Canned peaches, oakiness, and some, uh, some sweet tea character in there. It's a nice nose. I like the nose, even though it is obviously not super matured. So, it's man, still nice. The only problem with this story is, like, how do you explain to somebody? What do you want? Oh, we got a bourbon. Where's it from? Well, well hang on. <laughs> Take a seat. You're going to need to sit down for this. Yeah, yeah, because it's going to take me a while. <laughs> is it Hawaii? Yeah, it's technically from Hawaii. Really? No, technically from Washington. What is it? So 46.5%. Yeah. ABV. Okay, fair enough. I, I do like the nose, though. Hawaiian farmed Washington bourbon. Yes. How about that? Yep, that tracks. Hawaiian farmed. getting anything beyond canned peaches, oakiness, and a bit of a sweetened tea? Just the, that slight dusty corn grain note. It's a little bit bright. And yeah. dusty. It's nice, very sweet. Well distilled. It's tangy. Got some sugary sweetness, and that barrel is getting a little bit too dingy for me. That barrel bitter. But it's not 
bitter though. Yeah, it's like, getting me bitter. That could easily use another two or three months in the same barrel before I would think about I moving get, it. I get that barrel bitter note. I really? really do. Yeah, so walk me back a little bit. What have you been having, like black coffee recently? What just you, coffee. Just coffee. So maybe you're all acclimated day. to the black coffee. Maybe. And you're not finding a bitter note. I've not had coffee all day. I could say it's dry. The last thing I had to drink was, um, was at this Mediterranean restaurant. Oh, okay. Pineapple juice, apple juice, and mint. And it was very sweet, but nothing bitter all day. It's nice, though. Mm. It's definitely young. I would definitely, they, and they do have bigger barrel versions of these. Yeah. They have like 5, 15, 53. Mm -hmm. They got all these versions. 10, I think. I would love to see a full-size barrel and a little older. I like everything about this, but that landing on a barrel tannin forward bitter see, wow, finish. I'm really not getting that at all. Mm. The mm -hmm. most I could say is dryness. It mm. ends with a dryness instead of a lingering oily sweetness. Yeah, but it's definitely interesting. I like how... Because you hear something like Hawaiian grown grain and you want it to be mm. different. This is different. It is different. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. in a good way. It doesn't feel like it's out of bounds of what bourbon is like. Yeah, no, you wouldn't sip it and be like, what the hell did you just pour me? It's definitely bourbon. No mm -hmm. question it's bourbon. Mm -hmm. You want to add a little water? We have Dream of Mirrors. Dream of! Use cognac glasses if they don't have anything better. Yeah, we were talking about what do you go when you go to a bar Yeah. and they don't have like a good glass but you don't want that giant, wide-open, old-fashioned glass with a yeah. pour on the bottom of it. I think there, Second best. I think there is a level of niceness that the bar needs to have before they're going to have cognac glasses. But yeah. I also agree, once you're getting into the nicer bars, they're likely to have cognac glasses before they're going to have a Glencairn. You know what else they are likely to have? Mm. Uh, port or sherry, like dessert wines. Yeah, yeah. And those are smaller glasses. Mm. Yeah. You could do it in that. Yeah. What if... Um, I mean, cognac glass is usually like a big old bowl. I would mm. want something smaller than that. Mm. You could do champagne, but it's a tiny little flute, and that's just going to shove the alcohol right into your nose. Here's the thing. Are we overthinking this? Could a reasonable glass be, not ideal, but a reasonable glass be a shot glass? Because uh, it's a narrow thing. No, you because can sip it. it, um, it cause I try to do this at bars where they don't know what they're doing when I say neat. Yeah. Usually with mezcal or tequila. Yeah, yeah. And they'll be like, oh, neat tequila. This guy wants shots. Uh -huh. And then when you do that, you can't smell anything. It's so narrow and right. small. And the white and the top is always whiter than mm. the base. Mm -hmm. And the vapors just go out so and across. So you need space for the air to, yeah, to capture, capture the smell. And Otherwise, it's just it's gone. Funnel it up. I mean, look, look, I can show you. Take the same. Daniel busted his knee, so he's going to be limping around for the next few videos. Yeah. Uh, take the same whiskey. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. It's no comparison, man. Not even close. No this comparison. is why I say a shot glass. Yeah. It's almost as invisible as an old-fashioned glass. Yeah. It's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get... Like, Nothing. Like, well, like 20% of the nose. Maybe. Ah, oh, see? Yeah. yeah. It's no comparison. All right, with water. No comparison. Oh, that brought some of the gr uh, agricultural notes oh, yeah. to the front. Like a granola grain. Mm-hmm. A little bit of honey in there. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if I like it better. It definitely changed it. I don't like it better. I liked it without water. And yeah. it was 46.5%. Yeah, it held on to a more interesting, dense sweetness before the water was added. But nice. But nice. Interesting. Yeah. Billy Pilgrim, the cosmic bunghole curses you two to a hellish eternity of Cutty Sock and Clan McGregor for your insolent change of camera angles. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yep. Sort of leave the bunghole behind. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can drag him back here somewhere. Nah. Yeah. No, we're not dragging that Daniel shit. doesn't like change. No, no, I'm, I know what it takes to drag that thing. It and takes. I'm, I'm it not doing that. It takes one Dave. <laughs> Dave's not doing that. I believe in you, Dave. If there was anything different about this, like if you could do something different, because it has so many cool things that you get excited and then it just kind of, it's like... Age, it just needs more age. Just more age? Time. Just more age? Yeah, bigger mm. barrel, longer age. How That's many, it. How many distillery distilleries are licensed in Hawaii? Do you know? I know one in Oahu. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder I why mean, they... not because they don't exist, because I've never researched that. I wonder why they didn't partner with them. Who knows? Because it's a pain in the ass. Well, they had to, partner, distillery. had to partner with somebody. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So that one is almost entirely sourcing MGP. Oh. Okay. Who even knows if they have stills? Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, That's yes, old poly. Sure, when it's interesting enough, it's different enough. If you have the opportunity, then 
and you enjoy the bourbon, just see a, kind of an interesting, unique angle on bourbon. But it's not no. so different that you feel out of, out of sorts about it. Thanks, Akeda. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> if you fight me, you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink with us. <laughs>